Hello and welcome to another Froton Academy video. This video will provide an overview of the immunoassay techniques, highlight their diverse applications in clinical medicine, and describe the principles of these analytical methods. Immunoassays are a group of analytical techniques used to detect and quantify a molecule of interest in biological samples. These molecules may be proteins, hormones, antibodies, microbial antigens, drugs, and the like. Immunoassay techniques rely on the selective binding of immunoglobulins or antibodies to antigens or molecules of interest. The development and applications of immunoassays have been critical in advancing laboratory diagnostics and clinical medicine. The first application of immunoassays in clinical diagnostics began with the development of radioimmunoassay to measure insulin in biological samples. This breakthrough paved the way for the development of several types of different immunoassays, including enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, fluorescent immunoassays, chemiluminescent immunoassays, and immunochromatographic assays, which enabled the measurement of various analytes in biological samples. As a result, Immunoassays now have a wide range of applications, including in the screening and monitoring of drugs of abuse, as well as in the diagnosis of various infectious diseases, cancers, autoimmune disorders, just to name a few. Antibodies are produced by the activated B lymphocytes of the immune system in response to the detection of a foreign agent or antigen. Structurally, Antibodies are composed of four polypeptide chains with two identical heavy and two light chains that are joined together by disulfide bonds, making its Y-shaped structure. The upper portion is referred to as the fragment antigen binding or FAB region, which is highly variable and allows for the specific binding between the antibody and antigen. The bottom portion is referred to as the fragment crystallizable or FC region, which is highly conserved and is a critical determinant in the antibody isotype or class. There are two types of antibodies used in immunoassays. Monoclonal antibodies, derived from a single cell line that have a specific affinity to a single epitope on an antigen, and polyclonal antibodies that are derived from multiple cell lines and therefore have affinity to multiple epitopes on an antigen. The use of monoclonal antibodies in immunoassays provide increased precision due to the identical binding properties of the antibodies, but is more expensive to produce. There are several types of immunoassays which can be classified into two main categories, competitive and non-competitive. In competitive immunoassay, the reagent contains a known amount of labeled antigens that compete with the antigens from the biological sample for limited binding sites and the signal produced from the antigen-antibody conjugation is inversely proportional to the concentration of the analyte in the sample. In contrast, the only antigens present in non-competitive immunoassay is from the biological sample and thus the signal produced is directly proportional to the concentration of the analyte in the sample. The binding between antibodies and antigens is indicated by the labels such as enzymes, chemicals, radioisotope, fluorophores, and the like. The signal produced can be detected and quantified using detectors such as photometers, fluorescence, chemiluminescence, radioisotope, and electrochemical detectors. Let's now look at the principles of the most commonly used immunoassays. First up, Radioimmunoassay. It involves the use of radioactive labeled antigens bound to specific antibodies in the reagent. When the unlabeled antigens or analyte of interest in the sample is added, they compete with the radioactive labeled antigens to bind to their complementary antibodies and replace the bound labeled antigens. The replaced unbound radioactive labeled antigens decrease the radioactivity of the antigen antibody complex which is measured and the radioactivity is therefore inversely proportional to the amount of analyte of interest present in the sample. ELISA, or enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, can be used in four different formats, such as sandwich, competitive, direct, 
and indirect assays. The sandwich format is widely used, which employs two types of antibodies known as capture and detector antibodies. The capture antibodies are immobilized on the plate and the detector antibodies are labeled with an enzyme. The capture and detector antibodies bind to their target antigens from the sample to form a sandwich antigen antibody complex. A chromogenic substrate is then added to react with the labeled enzyme which produces signals in the form of colored products. The signal produced is measured and correlate with the concentration of the target analyte present in the sample. Fluorescent immunoassay or FIA uses detector antibodies that are labeled with fluorescent molecules to detect the target antigens. The principle varies depending on the type of the fluorescent probes used. Fluorescent immunoassay can be used in different formats such as indirect, direct, competitive, time-resolved, fluorescence resonance energy transfer and sandwich. The sandwich method is a widely used format which involves the capture of the target molecule by a specific antibody immobilized on a solid surface. A detector antibody labeled with a fluorescent molecule then recognizes a different epitope on the captured target molecule, thereby forming a sandwich complex. Upon excitation of the fluorescent probe, it releases energy in the form of fluorescent emission, which is then measured. The intensity of the fluorescent signal is proportional to the concentration of the target analyte in the sample. Chemiluminescence immunoassay, or CLIA, is similar to ELISA and can be used in both sandwich and immunocapture formats. The sandwich method involves the use of a capture antibody immobilized on a solid surface that binds to the target molecule. A detector antibody labeled with a luminescent molecule or an enzyme also binds to the captured target molecule, forming a sandwich complex. The enzyme on the detector antibody catalyzes a chemical reaction when the substrate is added which results in the emission of light. The emitted light is measured and proportional to the concentration of the target analyte in the sample. Immunochromatographic assay or ICA, also referred to as a lateral flow assay or strip test. This is a simple and rapid immunoassay technique usually used in point of care testing. The assay consists of a porous membrane containing immobilized capture antibodies. When a sample is applied to the membrane, the target analyte, if present, binds to the capture antibody. The resulting complex then migrates along the membrane and interacts with labeled detection antibodies, generating a visible signal such as a colored line which is visually interpreted. This table shows some of the advantages and limitations of the immunoassay techniques that we have just discussed. I will not go through this information but you can pause the video to review it. Bear in mind that this was just an overview of the main types of immunoassay methods and that there are several other types, variations and modifications available. That's it for this video and thanks for watching. As always, if you've gained any value, consider subscribing to the channel, like and share the video and comment for constructive discussion.